Let's take just a few minutes and think about Song of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 9. It is a beautiful verse. It is a powerful verse, and it really is very, very amazing to consider the depth of what is said there. Song of Solomon 5, 9. What is your beloved more than another beloved, O fairest among women? What is your beloved more than another beloved, that you should so charge us? In Song of Solomon chapter 5, the Shulamite woman begins to cry out for the man that she desperately wants to find. She explains what happened in the night and how she felt. Song of Solomon is really a beautiful love story, and it's just the heart of it is in chapter 5. Uh, it's not just a love story, though. It's, it's a love story the way that it's told. Uh, it's one that can reach all of us. Uh, we can understand it, and we, connect, we can connect with it. And, and that's where its beauty lies, is as we read it ourselves, what it says to us and, and what it does for us, how our heart moves. It's very interesting how this book is written. She says in chapter 5, as she begins to build her case, I heard his voice saying, open for me. So, so she's asleep at night. He's at the door and he says, open for me. He put his hand on the latch, she says, of the door, and my heart yearned for him. I arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh. So again, we have this picture of this woman. She says, I, I was asleep, but my heart was awake, uh, always thinking about this man. And then she heard his voice. She hears his hand touch the latch of her door, and, and she's springing up. She says, I, I arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh. She, she's obviously anointed herself uh, with sweet-smelling perfume in order to greet him the very best way that she knows how. She is in love. And so she's, she's kind of anointed herself with this perfume, this myrrh, and she races to the door to greet him there. And she says, I opened the door, but he had already turned and gone away. And we know how that feels too. Running to greet him, can't wait to say hello. Open the door in the dark, in the night, and there's no one there, and, and what you feel like, and, and how you look left and right, and, and try to peer through the darkness to make out any silhouette of a frame of a body. And she says he's gone. She goes on to say, the watchmen who went about the city, they found me. They struck me and wounded me, taking my veil away from me. Apparently, these watchmen of the city had found her wandering around late at night, crying out for the man that she loves, and they punished her. That's their job. She's not supposed to be out. Uh, dressed that way and she shouldn't be out in the middle of the night wearing perfume but as many religious disciplinaries are they were far too harsh they didn't understand that her heart was wholly set on one man and she would do anything to find him and because they don't understand that they've misjudged her motives and the reason that she was out so in song of solomon chapter 5 and verse 8 she turns to the daughters of Jerusalem, her friends. And she says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. She does not care. She says, look, if you find him, if you see him, you tell him I love him. I am in love. I am sick in love. I need him and I'll do anything to find him. And that's what spurs on the question in verse 9. The daughters of Jerusalem say, what is your beloved more than another beloved that you so charge us? So for us in the New Testament, we have to make this application to Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the conversation we have with others, we tell someone about the Lord. We tell someone about Jesus, what he's done, sacrifice, love, forgiveness, all those things that should come up in our everyday conversation. And, and people are going to naturally say, what, what's so big about that? What's so big about him? What is my beloved more than the other things that people choose? What is Jesus more than the things that other people follow or even worship? And I have to know the answer to that. I have got to be able to tell them with a lovesick heart because I do understand his great love for me, the price that he paid so that I could be his. I can say all these things about him and I can be passionate about it. I can be serious. I can be driven in a way that would take people off guard. It would surprise them how devoted and dedicated I am to this one that I call my beloved. There's a story I heard a long time ago about a preacher who he was called to speak to a lot of other younger preachers who had just finished, I guess, seminary. They went to school, they studied, they had gotten all the education they need 
They got the stamp of approval. You know, now, now they're ready. They're going to be preachers too. And so he comes in. He's supposed to speak to them and, and encourage them, you know, go get them, boys. But he, but he speaks to them very slowly. And he says to them, you've, you've, you have your education. You, you know what you need to know. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You better know what your beloved is more than these, because if you don't, you're not going to win anyone's heart or soul to Jesus Christ. The education is important. The understanding of Scripture, the application, it's all there. Doctrine is important. But if you are not in love with the Savior of the world, you won't be able to share that love with anyone else. And as he finished with them, he told them that famous saying, people do not care what you know until they know that you care. And, and that's what Jesus does for us. Jesus, as I am in love with him, passionately in love with all that he is and all that he's accomplished for my sake, then I do know all those things, but, but Jesus is pushing me. He's driving me to turn, to turn out and look and to see other people and to show them that I care about them because he cares for me. What is my beloved more than these? Let me show you. Let me show you all that he is and all that he means to me. And if I can have that kind of a heart toward him, and if you can have that kind of a heart toward him, then we're ready. We're ready to turn to a, a damaged and injured world, uh, people who have been hurt by others, people who have been abused in, in some cases uh, that can't trust anyone around them. Man, they're, they're just everywhere these days. They always have been. But for me to, to walk into any scenario or situation, you know, with a smile on my face and with warmth in my heart and to say to them, I want to share something with you. I have looked for him and I found him because he can be found, but you should be looking for him too, desperately. He loves you. He cares for you and he'll save your soul. What is your beloved more than another beloved that you so charge us? You know, what's interesting about Song of Solomon chapter 5 and, and just the beauty of that chapter is when you get to chapter 6 and verse 1, it's obvious by her passion and by her plea that she's convinced the daughters of Jerusalem to help her find her beloved. Song of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 1, we'll end with this. Where has your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned aside that we may seek him with you?